What's going on YouTube? Ace Poker back with another vlog. Just got done with the gym. Important to get a nice little cool down after the gym. Working on my physical health as well as my mental health. Trying to regain some motivation and just enjoy every day of life. But you guys aren't here for some life talk. You guys are here for some poker. And we are back at the New York City game. 5, 10, 25. We get premiums, premiums, premiums. We might make quads. I know I joke around about how I hate GTO. But I think I played really well this vlog. Can't wait for you guys to shit on me in the comments. Without further ado... Let's play some cards. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Is it an ace poker vlog without starting with some suited connectors and whiffing them? No, it's not. You guys are in for a treat. I've been kind of losing motivation a little bit here and there. Life's been getting in the way of things. You guys aren't my therapist, but I just wanted to say consistency breeds motivation. Through it all, I have not stopped dropping a weekly vlog, but I am back on my grind. I'm ready physically, mentally. Let's have a great vlog. Let's go, baby. <laughs> and before you ask, no, I'm not on any drugs. Just enjoying life a little bit more as of late. That's all you can ask for, huh? And uh, what a better hand to look down at than Pocket Kings for the first actual hand of the vlog. Let's get right into it. And what a better setup to look down at than an open 275. We come in for the 3-bet to 225. Folds back to him and he puts in the call. And just like all the poker players know, what's your immediate thought? No ace, no ace, no ace, and ace. Ace, eight, nine, rainbow. My opponent checks it to me, and you guys know I usually see bet all the time, but you gotta be checking back sometimes, or else your opponents are just gonna be raising your C bets and, you know, pushing you out of these hands. And if I had ace, king, ace, queen, maybe I'd be sneaky, check back, just having a complete lock on the hand. So I do decide to check. The turn is now the queen of spades, brings in a queen flush draw, jack 10 makes a straight. Not that I'm worried about that, just, I don't know, felt like I had to point that out. I, you guys obviously know jack 10 makes a straight, but anyways, he checks again for a second time. And uh, I actually decided to check back for a second time here. Going to a river, which is probably one of the best in the deck, the ace of spades, just makes it so less likely that he's got an ace. Maybe he'd pay us off with a queen, anything less than that, if we bet massive, trying to make it look like a bluff. So that's what I do when he checks for a third time. I bet $325, a super big sizing, and uh, it's actually pretty counterintuitive. If you bet bigger, people normally think that those are bluffs. So it's funny, a small sizing actually might get people to fold good hands, while these bigger sizings usually sometimes get called light. They're just super polarizing and that's what my opponent eventually comes down to he decides to put in the call i show the pocket kings and we're good and after the hand he told me he had a queen so i guess we got maximum value let me know what you guys think on to the next hand and this happens so many times especially because this game is so action we look down at a great hand in a great position in the cutoff excited to play there's an open and then there's a three bet before it even gets back to me i don't love cold calling three bets and i don't love four betting ace 10 suited especially from an early position open so gotta let go of some of these beautiful hands in position pains the soul a little bit but it's all right because now it's our time to dish out the pain with the pocket aces and even better there's one limp and open 250 a flat call from 50 to the player to my right it's back on me we're definitely putting in that three bet what sizing i decide to go 175 dollars this is definitely way too small definitely should be somewhere in the range of like 250 I think not too certain definitely have to check that uh, let me know what you guys would have raised to down below but maybe it works out to our advantage because it folds all the way back to the initial razor and he decides he's not gonna call he's not gonna fold he's gonna put in that four bet four hundred thirty five dollars maybe this small sizing enticed him to bump it up maybe if we would have gone 250 he would have just flatted or I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to think of good scenarios. Maybe if I made it bigger, he goes bigger than we can jam or have a smaller stack to pot ratio headed to the flop. But anyways, now that we're here, we're in position. We're just flatting. Don't want to scare him away with any hands he's got. We're going heads up to a flop of 9-5 deuce with two spades. Absolutely amazing board. Hopefully he's got 10s through kings and we can easily stack him here. Hoping he continues with a bet definitely will make our lives easier. Not sure if I want to check back if he decides to check, but doesn't come to that. He decides to bet out for $400. Same thing as preflop. Don't want to blast our opponent out of the hand here. In position, definitely makes it so much easier to play poker, so I put in the call. We're going heads up to a turn, which is the jack of clubs. 
Super weird card here. There's a double flush draw out there now. I'm not in love with any card 10 through king because he can have pocket jacks. Obviously, that would suck. Just have to chalk it up to a cooler. Now, I'm hoping my opponent just jams his last eight to $900 here, makes it easy. If he bets anything under that, just going to proceed with a call. But my opponent decides to check now. Hmm. Super interesting, like I've been saying, don't want to blast my opponent out of the pot, don't want to scare him out of the pot, there's really nothing to be afraid of here, we don't really need to be protecting ourselves from flush draws, don't need to be protecting ourselves from any combination of anything, so I decide to check it back, go into a river, which is one of the best cards in the deck, the three of hearts, all the flush draws miss, all the straight draws miss, we're not losing to anything besides pocket jacks. I am a bit nervous that he did decide to check and not just continue with the bet on the turn. But anyways, now that we're here on the river, if he checks, it's an easy jam. If he jams, we're snap calling. And that's what happens. My opponent goes all in. We snap call. We show the aces. And he shows pocket kings the absolute inevitable. The money was going in one way or another. I really like how I played this hand regardless of the fact that it was inevitable. But let's go, baby. Aces to kings. This is only the second time in my entire poker career that this has happened to me. Let's keep running it up, building a stack, and not punting it off like last session. Let's go. Good hand to my opponent. Uh, I guess you just need to get better at poker, my friend. Try not to get kings into aces. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, the very next hand, we look down at queen. Jack suited. Not gonna fold it just because we're racking up our chips. I open it up to $75 and the cutoff decides to 3 bet me to $225 and I decide to make the call and I just wanted to pause here and just point something out. Something that I believe in and I think is pretty commonly believed by most people. After you win a massive pot and you're racking in your chips, if you play the very next hand while you're still racking your chips, it's a good hand because most people just want to fold, calm their emotions after a big pot, especially after doubling up massively like I just did here. So I want to keep that in mind heading to this flop and let me know what you guys think about this. We go heads up to a flop of 1074 rainbow. I check it over to my opponent. He's going to bet we're going to snap fold, but he actually decides to check this one back and we turn top pair in the queen of clubs. Pretty interesting. Just going to continue to check in flow. Now my opponent bets $175 not going anywhere just yet we put in the call we're going to a river which is the six of spades eight nine makes a straight other than that seems like a pretty decent run out just gonna check see what he does if he bets small just gonna call you know maybe he'll check back we'll win but my opponent bombs it he bets 550 dollars what I mean, I've taken a completely passive line in this hand, but you got to keep in mind what I said earlier. It's just very commonly known that if somebody plays the very next hand while they're still stacking all their chips, especially after they just doubled up, they've got a big hand. And I think my opponent knows that the way he's playing it, it seems like he's got better than queen jack. Seems like he's got king queen, ace queen, maybe aces, maybe kings. They would definitely check back that dry ass flop. If he was going to be bluffing, if he was just ready to triple barrel bluff, seems like he would have started on the flop. I don't know why you'd start on the turn. Maybe he sensed weakness for my two checks. I'm not sure, and I want your feedback down below on this one. It's either the nuts, a really good hand, or it's just an airball bluff. And that's a tough thing about these bets is you just have to decide <laughs> which one. It is, you're either gonna look like an absolute genius or an absolute idiot. But I actually decide to make one of the tightest folds I've made in a super long time. I still feel weird about it, I think it should be a call, but I just like to pick my spots and I just didn't feel good and that's just poker, sometimes you go with your gut. Could be super wrong, could look super dumb, probably gonna get bullied in the comments, but that's alright, I show you guys all my hands, not afraid to show you guys the decisions that I make. And now the weird spots continue as we look down at ace king suited. There's a $25 straddle, one limp, and I decide to open it up to 100. The player to my left cold calls. And then the next player, the same player from this last hand, decides to three bet to $375. Hmm. It's back on me. We're pretty deep. I mean, with the straddle, not terribly over 100 blinds, probably somewhere in the range of like 140, 150 blinds. So not the absolute worst to get it in with ace king. But as I'm tanking and deciding what to do, the player to my left calls 375 out of position. And then it's like, oh shit, he didn't act yet. So now I've got a super interesting decision knowing that my opponent will call the 375 but obviously we'll probably fold if I decide to four bet here. And here's where I think I think about things a little bit wrong. I decide to take some extra equity 
and decide to just call if I hit my ace, my king, my flush. Definitely some good odds to do so, but probably should just be taking advantage of some dead money and, you know, four betting here. But I decided to just make the call, and, you know, like I said, the player to my left makes the call. And we're going three ways to a board of queen, nine, five, two spades, not even a heart out there. So frustrating. I mean, ace king never hits for me. I mean, should I keep that in mind and just fucking fold this hand? Uh, I guess I just have to keep trying to take it down pre-flop with ace king. Probably should be aggressive, four bet. Anyways, as played, I check. The player to my left checks. And now the three better bets out for $400. Lift up my cards in frustration. Show the guy next to me, my friend Josh, who came to the game. He loved it, by the way. And if you guys want to come, don't forget to hit me up. We fold. On to the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, the hand of the vlog. And what a better hand than with Jiggities. You already know it's getting spicy. So, of course, it's the hand of the vlog. Let's get into it. There's no straddle on. There's just a limp to $10. I open it up to $50. The button snap calls. And now the same guy from all these hands that's been 3-betting at will decides to 3-bet to $225. It's back on me. And I decide, you know what? I am sick of this guy. I'm putting my foot down. I'm putting in this 4-bet. I'm not going to call and just try to trap with jacks. I think this guy's probably going to snap fold to a 4-bet. Seems like he's just been 3-betting light. Maybe he's targeting me. I don't know why. Seems kind of fucked up if you ask me. But it's definitely a low-frequency 4-bet. Going to be calling a lot here. And from mostly everyone else at the table that doesn't 3-bet as frequently as this guy. Just going to put in the call. But hey, decide to 4-bet this one up to $650. The button gets out of there quickly. He scurries out of there. It's back on the small blind. And he thinks for a super long time. And in my head, I'm thinking if he 5-bet jams, my cards are going straight into the muck. Could not throw them in there any faster. But he decides to flat call, which is super interesting. Not too many times do you go heads up, 4-bet pot with quite a bit of money behind let's head to a flop you know there's only one card we're looking for and oh my goodness the set the jiggities are coming through queen jack three with two hearts obviously gonna be pretty gross if he's got queens but absolutely praying now that he has kings or aces didn't decide to five bet just tried to be sneaky he's also absolutely jumping for joy if he's got ace king of hearts happy to get it in he checks it over to me. I decide to see bet very small here, $420. I think going small makes super, super, super good sense with stack to pot ratio, not too massive. He makes the call. We're going heads up to a turn, which is the seven of hearts. I don't love the heart coming in. Obviously, for a bunch of reasons, he could have the best hand now. But if he had a queen, if he had ace queen, he's not going to love this unless he's got ace queen with the ace of hearts. Could definitely call it off if we jam, but... When he checks it over to me, I've got about $1,100, $1,200 remaining. Obviously, a lot more than that in the pot. Could check this one back, but definitely thinking in my head if I check it back and he's got any heart, a heart comes on the river, he'll call or it'll go check, check, and he'll win. So I just want to get the money in now. I decide to go all in. My opponent does not snap call, which is great. Doesn't snap fold, also great. Now I'm rooting for a call. He folds, we run the river, and we river quads. Oh my goodness. Quads. Oh, fuck. Fuck, check back one time. Now I'm wishing I would have just checked back. Maybe could have got him to bluff. He said we were probably chopping, which for the life of me makes no sense. Oh my goodness, making quads in the hand of the vlog, getting paid, not losing the hand of the vlog like last vlog. Uh, that means that your session's probably on a pretty good trajectory. It is. Let's keep it that way. Let's head to the next hand. Then we had somebody join the game who was one of the most talkative players that I've ever seen at the table. It was pretty funny. Just going to give you guys a quick glimpse, but had me dying laughing like the entire time. It was so funny. Why so much? So was that bluff? Oh, that's a pot size. Though. That is bluff. That's bluff. Is that bluff? <laughs> he just had me dying laughing. He was talking every single hand. And we get into a crazy hand ourselves here with 6-7 offsuit. As you see, I'm eating a protein bar. Literally wasn't even trying to get into this hand. But how did that happen? We are in the big blind. A bunch of people limped. I obviously check. Not raising with 6-7. And we flop the nuts. The stone cold nuts. Wow. Not only do we flop the nuts, the small blind checks. I check. 
Under the Gun, who limped, bets 20, and three players call before it even gets on me. I'd love to slow play the nuts here and then put in a massive check raise on the turn, but with so many draws available, Jack 10, club draws, two pairs, people could have sets, don't want to slow play, gonna fast play, put in the raise right now. What sizing after all this action? I settle on $110. Think it's pretty good, it's big, it's not too big. Under the gun, the talker makes the call. The next player hops into the tank and I'm like, oh my goodness, is he gonna call? Is everyone gonna call? But he folds, the button makes the call, and the small blind folds. So we pick up two players and we're going three ways to the turn here, which is the queen of spades. I don't love it, it's not the worst. The club draw misses, the board doesn't pair, but one of the most obvious draws, Jack-10 does complete for straight. That would absolutely suck, but not going to just check here after raising the flop. Going to keep betting. I make it $225. And now Under the Gun thinks for a super long time. He leans back in his chair, and he stops talking this hand. He's focused, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that means he's got a monster. I hope it's not Jack-10. As you see, he's got a lot of money in front of him. I've got a lot of money in front of me. Fireworks could fly if he raises. I'm not folding. Might have to pay off a massive river bet, but... After the longest time, he decides to just make the call and the button folds. And now, as the river comes out, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna head to the audio here. Absolute chaos ensues. I haven't looked yet. Did I hit? It's a three of diamonds. Did I hit it? I don't know what you have. Did you miss it? I did. Oh, okay, good. So then I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm good. Two pair good? I don't know. Oh, it's, and it's way good. It's way good. I'm not gonna bet nine. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm double gutted. I thought you were gonna bet. Exactly. If you fucking misses on the turn, I'm fucking double gutted, bro. Come on, stop. I thought I you like were gonna bet. I was like, do I chase? Because I could rep a flush too. So I was like, I'll chase. I was really didn't want to donate to Twitter. So if he wasn't behind, I would have said donation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've never had that happen to me. After he called, he just stared at me and then asked me what the river was without even looking. I told it to him. He starts saying, oh, is two pair good? Is this good? That good? I'm like, bro, I, I was going to bet massively, but I decided to just check and just try to act weak. Maybe he'd fire a massive bet and I would just call, but unfortunately he checked it back. He wasn't going to call anyway. He just had one pair, but just a super funny and interesting hand. And then we get pocket aces again, this time no straddle again, a limp, I make it 50, and we get 3 bet for the second time tonight with pocket aces, he makes it $150, it's back on me, and now this time I'm not going to be sneaky, I am going to put in the 4 bet, I make it $400, my opponent thinks about it for quite some time, and decides to make the call, so again, aces, 4 bet pot, heading to the flop, I mean, you can't ask for some better cards and some better situations. The flop comes queen three, four with two spades. We've got the ace of spades, so absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Of course, besides pocket queens, we decide to see bet here instead of check. We make it $325. I think this is actually a little bit too big. I think with this much coverage and with us having the ace of spades, we should go even smaller, maybe like $250, $200. Let me know what you guys think about that one. But my opponent decides to fold, unfortunately. But hey, can't complain picking up a nice pot with aces. All right, all right, that wraps up one of my favorite and best and I think well-played sessions of all time. Obviously getting aces twice, kings, jacks, making quads helps a lot. And uh, for the final drum roll please numbers, we made $3,200. It's still crazy to me that I'm getting to do what I love and I can make over $3,000 in one week. Absolutely insane. Thank you guys so much for supporting my journey. I would never be here if it wasn't for each and every single one of you guys. That's why I always say you guys are family. If you guys ever need anything, please reach out to me. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate each and every one of you guys so much. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I'll catch you guys next week.